This is your Weather Extreme video for Thursday, August the 3rd. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks so much for tuning in. There's a look at the satellite image over the southeastern U.S. this morning. And once again, just like yesterday, we have a good deal of clouds. As a matter of fact, there's a good deal of rain, a large area of rain that's moving through southeast Alabama. On the surface map, we uh, don't really have a whole lot to talk about uh, in the way of systems over the southeastern U.S. We're still basically being influenced by the large high uh, over the Appalachians. But the uh, surface low you see over Iowa is likely to drag that front down into our area for Friday and washing it out in the uh, area on Saturday and Sunday. In the upper atmosphere, we're still in a fairly substantial trough, and you can see the little short wave over Minnesota that is uh, helping to reinforce that trough over the next uh, couple of days. The temperatures across central Alabama generally in the lower and mid-70s, and uh, unfortunately dew points have come up. You can see that Tuscaloosa has a dew point of 71. The other uh, areas, Birmingham, Gadsden, and uh, Anniston, all generally in the mid and upper 60s, but just means humidity levels are back up. The regional radar shows a good deal of showers over southern uh, Louisiana and along the Gulf Coast, as well as that large mass that's over uh, southeastern Alabama. So uh, central Alabama basically out of it for the time being, but with the heat this afternoon, we expect to see showers. The uh, watch warning map is fairly quiet. Uh, the gray areas that you see uh, there over parts of uh, Oklahoma and Texas have to do with air quality, as it, as it is over uh, uh, Arizona. The reds, oranges, and um, kind of reddish purples, I guess you'd call them, those are all uh, high fire danger and um, as well as uh, heat advisories and heat warnings. And there's flash flood watches over the Southern California area. QPF-wise, we're looking at uh, on the order of three quarters to probably one inch, maybe a little bit more than that over the next five days. Storm Prediction Center has a slight risk just ahead of that surface low over parts of northern Illinois and southern uh, Wisconsin for day one. For day two, the surface low moves into the middle Great Lakes area, and uh, the slight risk then is from Ohio and uh, eastern Ohio and northern uh, West Virginia across parts of western Pennsylvania and western New York State. And then on day three, there is no slight risk area, but there's a marginal, a large marginal risk out over the uh, central plain states extending uh, back into uh, southern Montana. Tropics. Uh, we had a couple of areas of concern yesterday, but now we only have one area of concern, and this is a new area that has moved off of the African continent. There's a little bit of a better close-up view of it. Still uh, rather disorganized at the moment, but as it treks on steadily westward, it's expected to move into an area where conditions favor some development, so maybe uh, by early next week we may see a tropical depression. In the Eastern North Pacific, we have an area of disturbed weather that is off the uh, southern part of, the, of Mexico, and it is also moving westward and is likely to develop over the next couple of days and may become a, an organized storm by the weekend. All right, there's 06 EGFS model run, and there's uh, our major trough coming into uh, Minnesota with a little bit of a short wave that's moving across our area that is helping to uh, enhance that rain that you see over the uh, southern part of the state. And that looks like we'll probably see um, some chances on the order of 30-40% chance over the uh, northern half of the state of Alabama today. The trough moves into Lake Michigan, basically, or over Lake Michigan. Uh, and uh, that sort of combines the flow now and gives us uh, just a trough over uh, the lower Mississippi River Valley, and that just, uh, with the surface low moving up into the central Great Lakes, we see the cold front uh, moving down into uh, the southeastern U.S. The GFS a little bit uh, more uh, bringing the front to the a little bit further to the south, where it's expected to stall over central Alabama. That upper trough moves into southeastern Canada, and the flow over the southeast becomes a little bit more zonal. Unfortunately, what that means is that the front will become parallel to the flow, so it will lose any pushes to actually move any further. Now, the GFS, with uh, looking at precipitable water values, the GFS suggests that some drier air may get into the Tennessee River Valley to where they may be able on Saturday to remove chances for showers. Uh, we're going to stay on the edge of the moisture 
Uh, so I don't think we can remove chances, but they could be lower on the order of maybe 20%. The flow remains somewhat zonal uh, across the southeastern U.S. on Sunday, uh, though we do note a little short wave over Missouri. Uh, the same thing is true on, on Monday. And, uh, but again, we do note another little short wave over Texas. That short wave comes across the lower Mississippi River Valley on Tuesday. And uh, once again, I think that's just going to allow, with the moisture in place for Tuesday, just a fairly good chance for showers and thunderstorms. Uh, that little system kind of wiggles by and kind of weakens. Uh, so once again, by Wednesday, we're back into more or less a zonal flow, and we stay that way on Thursday. Now, uh, this this is the uh, Thursday chart, and uh, interestingly enough, uh, the GFS is beginning to once again uh, provide us with some nice topics for discussion in the way of some tropical mischief. As we move out into voodoo country, this is the 13th of August, the GFS definitely has a tropical system, actually has two, uh, one potentially in the Gulf of Mexico and a second one that's actually out there in the southwest Atlantic. So as we move out in time, we get out to the 16th, uh, Wednesday, uh, August 16th, the GFS takes the Gulf system into the area of Galveston in the southeast Texas coast, and it brings the other one up into the southeast U.S. coast in the vicinity of Savannah. And that system eventually, as it tries to move around the Bermuda High, moves up into eastern Kentucky. That puts Alabama on the eastern, pardon me, on the western side of this system. So that puts us on the drier side, if indeed this system does develop. But you know how it is. It wasn't here yesterday. It might not be here tomorrow. That's the nature of voodoo country. That'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. I'll have the next one posted around 7 tomorrow morning. I hope that you have a great day. Godspeed.